are your tests full with such hard-coded data as my tests are here? I mean, it's not something like really bad. You tested the test, you saw that it's working with a specific set of data, but you're searching for a way to make it a little bit more flexible. And by the end of this video, I will show you a quick way how you can do this in Cyprus. So first, let's see what this test does. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, I would say. It fills a form and checks for some text, but let's see it in action. So it opens the automation in testing site, fills in the form and submits, and then checks uh, for this text here. Now, it's good, it works, it does its job, but a problem that I see, or a problem that I mentioned at the beginning is, I mean, you have always the same data, the same name, the same email, the same phone number, and that's not the best way. So how would you go about and fix this? I mean, one way would be, of course, to, for example, create such um, fixtures. We have Cypress creates this fixture in this um, JSON file in the fixtures, and you can basically use this in your test. So we see here exactly we have here name and email. So this two would be good. But in the end, this is also hard-coded data. It's just prettier, but it's still hard-coded data. So the way I propose to do it, or the solution I propose right now, is to use um, an NPM package. I mean, the NPM package that I'm suggesting is, is famous. Uh, it's used a lot and although its name suggests it's not even real, it is real. So I suggest we use faker.js. And in, you will see in, it just takes a few minutes from installation to actually magically generating data. So let's just install it. We have under installation here, we have the command that we need to install. We can copy the command from here. We open our terminal. We paste it, enter, we wait a few seconds, we pray that it works, and it worked. Okay, we can close this. And okay, we have it now. So how can we use it? Well, the documentation also provides this for us. So it says here, <coughs> usage. So let's just go ahead and import this, or copy this import. We go into our test, and above the describe, we can put our import. So now we have Faker. And there's a nice and not so nice way to use the data generated by Faker. So the nice way will be to go like in the example. So we create two constants. And we can actually use this random name and the random email in our test. And if we run our test again, the test still passes and we have a random name and a random email. If we run it again, again, random name, random email. And the not so nice way, let's use that not, not so nice way for the phone number. But you might be asking, okay, so how do you know um, what kind of data Faker provides for you? Well, pretty simple. We just open the main page and we have here under API, all of um, the, let's say, broad areas for which Faker.js provides us with uh, fake information. However, of course, you, I have no idea what's under helpers or what's under image. Um, so a quick way to check, can I actually um, generate the fake phone number would be to go to the search and just say phone. And I'm in luck. So I have a couple of options here. I select the first one. 
and let's say phone number okay so it seems if i do fake from uh, phone number let's copy this and <coughs> we can actually directly under or in type can do faker dot phone dot phone number and let's see if our test runs and our test ran with a random phone number let's run it again and we have again a phone number and there you have it this was how you can add some more data or not have or how you should can um, overcome the hard-coded data issue um, in Cyprus. As always, thank you for watching this video, uh, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, and bye-bye.